We're about to talk to a uh, footballing legend, Leeds United player Norman Hunt has been inducted into the Football Hall of Fame and we're here in his house to talk to him about it now. So Norman, you, f you debut for Leeds, what was that like when you were told you were going to be pulling on that, that famous shirt? Well, it, w it was quite funny because uh, what he used to do then, he used to take a couple of the younger players with the first team and he took Paul Reaney, Rodney Johnson and myself and none of us knew we were playing. We just thought we were going down with the first team for the experience. Gary, Gary Sprague had already played one game. So we went down to Swansea and we were there in about quarter two before the game. He just said, he just said to the three of us, four of us, come on for a walk. And we just thought we were gonna go see the pitch, you know, and he took us for a walk and then under, under the old stand at Swansea and that, and he said, you're all playing. So that in itself was a brave move. One goalkeeper who had played one game and then stuck three kids in who had never, all at the same time. So, and then we won. And then we we just carried on winning from then. And then it just, it just went from there. It was a tremendous period of success for Leeds, wasn't it? Uh, what, what do you put it down to? What, what made... Leeds all of a sudden become a real threat in the football league? Well, I think you've got to put it down initially to Don Revy. You know, how he organised things, how he run things. Uh, his man management, he, he, he was brilliant at that. He knew exactly what to, what to say to you, put his arm around you, tell you off, different things. And then, then it was a group of players. His buy-in was brilliant. You know, when you think, the first person that really started us going was Bobby Collins. And then he, he, he got Bobby and then he, he got one or two other players. He signed Johnny Giles for 33,000 from uh, Man United. And all these other players. And then they got us out of the second division into the first. And then to be fair, he gradually got rid of some and then he brought in Alan Clark, Mick Jones and all that. And then Peter, Eddie, Teddy Orev, and then George Orton, Gordon McQueen. All these people just came into the team and then we just got better and better. You had a, a, a great partnership with Jackie Charlton. What was, what was it like? What was your relationship like on the field and off the field? Well, on the field, it was uh, Jack was definitely the boss. Because there's only one way to London, and that's Jack's way. And, uh, but uh, we appreciated, or I did anyway, what the big man did for me. Because uh, I was a Geordie, and he was. And uh, he, di he did look after me a bit. All right, he bossed me around, and he told me what to do. But that was just Jack. And then, and then we had Paul Reaney at right back. And initially, starting at left back was Willie Bell and Gary and Goal. So it was a good back five, m mainly controlled by Jack until we got a little bit older. And then we started, not very often, but then we started giving him a little bit of back of what he used to give us and lose with temper with him and things like that. And But then it just gelled and Willie Bell moved on and then Teddy Cooper came in there and we stayed together I instantly knew if I went there, Jack would be there. I didn't have to look, I didn't have to do anything, and vice versa. If he went there, he knew, and, and that's how we became, we became one of the best uh, defensive teams in Europe at the time. You obviously got the, the tag, bites your legs. Uh, we, what kind of player were you? For someone, a youngster that hadn't seen you play, how would you describe how Norman Hunter played football? <laughs> well, it's difficult. I think uh, I think defending and the game then was 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 slightly different. Uh, the physical side was different, and the tackling side. When we played, you never got booked for your first tackle. It was nearly always free, so you went in that little bit harder, you know, than you should do. I'm not saying it was right. Nowadays, you wouldn't get away with it, but. But the thing is, I could play and all because of the players I played with. 
you know, when you're playing with Johnny Giles and Billy Bimner and Bobby Collins, you know, these type of players, if you don't improve as a footballer, there's got to be something wrong with you, you know. So uh, I enjoyed coming out and playing, but my job, the gaffer used to say to me, you win the ball and give it to those who could play. And that's what he used to say to me all the time. And uh, But I could play a little bit, but me first me first aim was to defend. You obviously could play, Norman, because you, you, your peers voted you the PFA Player of the Year, didn't you? What That was the first one. What kind of honour? I mean, that must have been special for you. Well, that was that was as big as you get with it being the first one. Uh, he said to me, you're going to win this, you know. I said, nah, no chance. No chance, because I was... The other one that was in for it was Ian Callahan in Liverpool. Well, Cali was squeaky clean. He was, he was a model professional. He was a good player, mind you. And that, and then there was me and Leeds United with the reputation. So I didn't quite uh, think I would win it, but he was right. He was right, and I won the first one. And that, that was as big an honour to me as it was actually uh, playing for my country. You won, you won pretty much everything with Leeds United. Um, when did you know as a group that you were part of something special under Don Revin? Well, I think, uh, I think Eddie Gray said it, and, and I've got to agree with him. When you used to sit there and you used to look around the dressing room and you used to see these players and you used to think, well, if these lads play the way they're capable of playing all the time, we can't get beat, you know? You just looked at them and you thought, well, we're going to win this game. And and that's what we used to do. We used to go, all right, we did lose a few things, but the main thing was we were involved. Every year we were involved with something for 10, 10 11 years. So it was a great bunch of players, some great players that would have walked into anybody's team in the world at the time. So you're the fifth member of that team to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, aren't you? So it shows how, how good it was. And is it must be nice that people look back now and, and respect how good that team was that you were part of. Well, there is a lot of respect within the profession. Do you know what I mean? Not, not people that support other teams, you know, because Leeds United had this certain reputation and we weren't very well liked in that. But within the game, within the game, uh, people say that was the best side we played against. And a lot of people have said that to me. But in, in we were. We, we could do what you wanted. If you wanted to make it physical, we could do that. And if you wanted to play, we could do that. And we could mix them both up together, especially when you're playing in Europe. And, uh, and that was a sign of a very, very good side. The only thing you didn't win was the European Cup. You came very close. Is that you look back on that as a, with a bit of regret that you couldn't quite manage the the whole lot? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's quite funny, you know. People talk about winning things, and it, and it's good to win things. But the thing that sticks with you longest is the things you lose, you know. And uh, if I'd have, if we'd have won that European Cup, that would have been the full lot for me because. I've got a, a a World Cup medal, 66. So that would have been the the, the full thing, and uh, but unfortunately we we got beat again uh, by Munich that day, and there was a bit of controversy in that anyway. But anyway, that that's by and by. That was the only uh, disappointment I didn't have with, with Don Revy and then bunch of lads I played with that we did not win the European Cup. You got like you said, you got your hands on your. World Cup winners medal, albeit belatedly in 2009. How did that feel when you, you finally got your hands on, on a medal of your own? Well, that, w- that was good. It, 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 the, the medal itself didn't actually have that much significance to me. To actually be part of that squad in 66 it is what was important to me because I was very fortunate. I had Don Revy, club manager, and Alf Ramsey international manager. Alf was brilliant. Alf was, in my opinion anyway, and he said to us that we would win the World Cup. And we didn't really believe it at first, but he kept saying, say, we will win this World Cup. We will win it. And we did. And uh, we won it well in the end. And I remember he said, I want everybody on the touchline, no matter where you are, 
when the final whistle goes. I want you 10 minutes before the game, I want you down on the, ba- on the, on the track and near. Anyway, Jimmy Armfield and myself are up in the stand watching the game. 10 minutes to go, a quarter of an hour to go, so Jimmy and I got out of our seat, got in the lift. The lift got stuck a bit for a while. We came down, and as we were in the, we, in the lift, we heard this huge roar goes up. And we, we thought we had scored, and we came rushing out, and they said, oh, the Germans have scored. So then we had to sit there through, through extra time. And then, and then every, you know, Jeff did what he had to do and that. So it was a great feeling. A great the only disappointment is, is that you're part of the squad and you're proud and everything else, but you haven't played. Mm. What, what those lads must have felt like that actually played must have been awesome. Were you unlucky? I mean, you got 28 caps. A lot of people would give the right arm for 28 England yeah. caps, but Bobby Moore w- w- played in your position as well, didn't he? Were you unlucky, or how do you look back on your England time? I don't think I was unlucky. I think I was delighted to get 28. Uh, and I sat there as a youngster. I went there. And, all right, you're quite shy and that, but deep down within yourself, I was thinking, I want to play there. I want to play in that number six, and that. But I sat and watched this man play, this Bobby Moore, poof, and awesome, you know. And the better the opposition, the better he played. So I used to sit there and think, well, I'm never going to play unless Alf just changes it around a bit. But I didn't mind. I didn't mind. It was, it was one of the only things I defied Don Revy on was he didn't want me to go with England. I said, I'm sorry, Gavin. A, a, a Geordie lad from up there getting picked for England, there is no way, no way I'm turning that down. And I used to go, and I knew I was never going to play, but I didn't mind. I went as much for Eng- I went as much for the man, Alf Ramsey, as I did for England. I thought Alf was brilliant. To play him for England, obviously one of the biggest honours you had then. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember him telling me, uh, my first cap, well I got me, I came on a sub, one of my first caps, but when I was actually picked at Wembley, I used to, you have a routine when you're getting ready to play, and I used to go and start about two o'clock, but I can remember, that's usually an hour before kickoff. I can remember I was sat there an hour and a half before the kickoff, and I had my kit on, shirt on, and everything, so I can remember that, yeah. Funny enough, I can't remember who we played, but I can remember that sitting in the dressing room with a shirt on. Were you nervous before games? Did always, always. It, uh, when I first started, I used to uh, near sometimes nearly throw up with nerves. Uh, but I'm that that's the type of person I am. You know, I, ca- I can't. Uh, I was no good in friendlies or anything like that. I needed it. Uh, I needed that competitive edge and that thing to get you going and stuff like that. Uh, always nervous, very much. Okay. Uh, for youngsters that look on the internet and, and search Norman Hunter, they, they'll find your uh, battle with Fran- Francis Lee uh, when you both got sent off. Tell us about that. What what what, what sparked that off? Because it, it looked quite nasty, the pictures. Well, the thing is, it wasn't so much because Francis and I got on quite well, funny enough. You know, we'd been with England and everything. But Franny was great at diving. And there was a situation where he ran at me and I never touched him. <laughs> Boom. Got a penalty, didn't you? Stuck it in. And then and then something happened and then I, I was a little bit mad with myself and then s- me and him had a little set to and I and I, I punched him a bit and then and then the referee came and I must be honest, I did cut his lip a little bit and as we were going off, he lost his temper. And then he come at me again and things like that. You would get life now, wouldn't you? You would, yeah, <laughs> you would. <laughs> but then, uh, uh, for Franny got done for bringing the game into disrepute afterwards, and, and I got away with it. So, I don't think he was too happy. Who was? I mean, obviously, like you said, it was a different game back then. Who was the toughest competitor that you played against? Well, there was a very, very good player, very good player, played for Burnley. Uh, a lad called Andy Lockhead, big Scottish lad, centre forward, good player. You looked, he never said a word at you, Andy, 
He just looked at you. And then, and you knew, you knew the first ball you got that he was going to come in and he was going to have a go at you. And he knew the same. So there was some, there was some good players, some big, strong, because then the light worked in pairs, didn't they? You had the big guy and a little guy playing alongside him. And usually the big guys were very, very tough. Uh, there was a lad played for Southampton, a lad called George Kirby. He was a good player, big, strong player. These ones really would test you. They'd look at you and they'd give you an elbow and everything. But I would say the hardest, one of the hardest players I played again was definitely, physical-wise, uh, Andy Lockett. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the game now. I'm going to see you at Ellen Road. Obviously, still involved there. What do you miss about playing, Norman? What One thing do you miss the most? One thing I miss, I miss the dressing room. I don't miss playing. Uh, I miss the crack and the banter. And I miss that feeling that I used to get when I woke up in the morning to go training. That's what I miss above all. Uh, and you can't explain what, what atmosphere Don Revy sort of produced and created down there. Just to go training with the lads was, was uh, for me anyway, was absolutely brilliant. And the crack in the banter, that's what I miss. What was it like when Don left then? Obviously, you know, the film about Brian Clough, etc. What was it like when, when he left? Was it, did it, what was it like for you players involved? Well, it was a bad time. You know, we, we know in, as a professional, you know when things need to change. And I think the players would have been happy if he'd have turned around and said, I'm sorry, son, you're getting a little bit long in the tooth. You've got to go. But he couldn't do it. He couldn't break us up, you know. And he, and he really, he nearly had a nucleus of players coming through. He'd already done that. He had the Scottish lads he, and things like that. But he just couldn't get rid of us. So, mind you, to be fair, the England job came along. And he's, he's got to take that. And we were upset. And we would... People... Brian Clough said we didn't really give him a... You know, try for him. But we did. We wanted somebody else to come in. Mm. And that. But it just didn't work with Brian Clough. It was... Uh, he didn't give himself a chance. And he didn't give us a chance. Mm. I'm looking at it. And obviously, if anyone mentions your name, everyone says, no, we're not Leeds United, but you, you played elsewhere as well. What was it like when your time at Leeds came to an end for you? Well, I didn't want to go. Uh, I said to the manager that was in charge, uh, I'm happy in Leeds. I'll say I was 30, 32, coming up nearly 33. I said, I'll sign another two-year contract for you and I'll play in your reserves. And I'll do that, for, you know, because yeah. I didn't want to go. But I didn't ask for a lot of money. I wanted to rise and blah, blah, blah. But they said no. So I said, well, you don't really want me to stop here. And they give me all the excuses, but anyway. So I ended up going to Bristol City. And probably, in some respects, that was a great move and all. Because I loved it down there. Lovely part of the country. And got on very, very well with the fans. And it was a complete contrast from Leeds to Bristol. Mm. You know, we were so professional in many, many ways. They were a little bit unorganised, flew by the seat of their pants, but there were some good players there too. And we did all right. We had a good, we had a three and a half good years there. What was it like um, for you at Leeds? I just want to ask you some things about the best players you played with and against and things like that. Who was the best player you played with at Leeds? Well, that, that's a close one because there's, there's been some great players. Uh, you ask one player, they'll say somebody else. You ask another player, they'll say somebody else. But my player I would pick would be Johnny Giles. Uh, people would pick Billy Bremner. You know, one person I played with, but not for very long, but only probably for 45 minutes, that was John Charles. I would have loved to have seen him in his in his pomp, and he would have been, because Big Jack Charlton says uh, he's the best player Leeds have ever had, and I never I never played with John that much. But uh, as far as football goes and everything, 
How was Sir Johnny Johnny? And who was the one player you played against? You think, well, I'd love if if he'd have been able to play for us at Leeds. Who would that have been? Well, the one person that caused me more problems than anybody scoring goals was Jimmy Greaves. Great little. You look at Jimmy Greaves' record; it's awesome. And what a goal scorer! And I used to get a little bit close to Jimmy, and uh, and I let that little fella go for a second. I'd be on top of him and on top of him. Just let him go for a second. Ding. And he used to do that to me. And I used to go, yeah, a little. And he knew, but uh, what a great goal scorer. Yeah, excellent. Uh, you've got so many fond memories, I guess, of your career. If I asked you to pick out which one, which one would it be? The world very hard. Very hard, that. I often say that if I, that one of the co- things that was the most important thing to me was getting signed professional, because if you don't do that, all the rest doesn't happen. And that's that. Sometimes you can be talented and just make it, and other times you might have as much skill, but you could be in the right place at the right time. That was me because. I got to 17, the previous manager said to me, we're not so sure about you. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going back to Newcastle here. And then he said, we'll give you another six months. Why he said that, I don't know. But in that six months, he got the sack. Don Revy, Don Revy took over. And then that was it. I was off then. And uh, I was one of his, I've got to be honest, I was one of his favourites. The gaffer, you know, all the lads laugh about it. They were saying it. Eddie was saying it last night, even. But, uh, but that's just how it was. And he took over. And then, do you ever? You can't have imagined when you came down from the northeast that what was going to happen to you? Because now, you know, what sixty odd years later, people are still reminiscing about what a fantastic career you've had. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's quite amazing in that respect. I think, uh, for some reason, that era that we played in people seem to be able to remember it. I go throughout the country and people come up to me and they rattle that Leeds team off to me, you know. And I'm thinking, well, how do you remember that? And you can't even do that with, you can try and rattle off any team. Mm -hmm. And yet people knew that Leeds United team. So I think that era of when we played, it seems to stick in people's mind. And there's there's a lot, they're written about it and there's a lot spoken about it. A lot of people speaking, it was Southampton you played when you just completely kept hold of the ball, they couldn't get near it. Was that one of them moments where you just think, wow, I'm playing in a really good team here? Well, that was a quite strange because that was a game we started off. I know this might be quite strange, but for 20, 25 minutes, that game was very close, very close. Nothing in it. They had a couple of chances, we had a couple of chances. And then Clarky, Alan Clark, bang, not one in. Just before half time, bang, he knocked another in. And then we went in second half, and then it just started to roll, and we were banging them in all over the place, banging them in. And then <laughs> we got the ball, and we had 29 passes. And then we lost it, we, and then Paul Madeley got it back. And then the lads start. I didn't join in in that because I can't do that. And they started flicking it here and everything in all over the place and that. But uh, that was that was a good period because we beat Southampton, and then we I think we went and beat Man U five or something. Yeah. So it was a good period in that. So, uh, but that one you shouldn't do that to your fellow pros. You shouldn't do that. I don't know how the Southampton players stood for that. Because mm. we wouldn't. Would you? I was going to say, what would we, you do? <laughs> we wouldn't have stood for that. There's no way at all that we would have. Something would have happened. Yeah. A fantastic career, Norman. I mean, do you still keep in touch with the guy? I see you down at Ellen Road and, and, and Eddie and that are there all the time as well. Do you still keep in touch, all you guys? Well, we're still there, yeah. But, you know, we, uh, we occasionally, through Paul Reaney, we have we go signing. We, they, you know, they take us down to the Birmingham NEC and things like that, and we did that last year. And then it's good to see that Dave Harvey comes down from Scotland, all of us, and that. And it's nice to see because you get reminiscing and everything. But uh, 
and I see Paul, Paul Rini, Paul Madeley, a bit poorly at the moment. Uh, just Peter, Eddie, Teddy Olive, you know, and uh, and probably then occasionally bump into Jack. Johnny Giles rang me the other day, and that was so. It, it's still there. I think for what we went through, you're not going to lose that very easily. Uh, and looking at it, obviously we, we see you down at Ellen Road. Do you still get that spin, uh, that tingle down the back of your neck when you see the players coming out? Well, I, 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 I sometimes try and go as like just a spectator, but I can't. I can't. It, 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 it's part of me. It's my club. And I'll sit there and I, I do get very frustrated with them. Well, I'm going to say, because you sit next to us sometimes on the gantry and you bang in the desk when something doesn't quite go yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I, I just get annoyed. And I, because the beauty of the football is it's opinions. It's your opinion. It's my opinion. It's his opinion. And they all vary, you know. I'm thinking they should do A, B and C. And other people don't. The manager probably doesn't. But as long as I keep feeling for that, the w like that for the club, then I'll go down there and work as long as I can. Yeah, uh, and do you feel success is far away for Lee? It's very competitive, isn't it, the Championship? Very. People say to me, oh, Dad, not very good, this Championship. Well, I totally disagree with them. I think it's an extremely hard division to get out of. I think everybody's very even. There's just a, a few percentage difference between winning and losing and stuff like that. And uh, I think we've got, not yet, we need we need to sort of get rid of this sort of thing that's on my shoulder at the moment about not winning at home for about 10 games, is it? Mm, yeah, since March, yeah. You know, we've got to get that over. And what a good time to do it again, top of the league. Mm. Uh, and once we get that, and then we, we start, if we can start to put a run together, then I don't think it's going to be this year. I think the following year might be a bit better. And then probably two or three years' time, hopefully, we'll be there. You've got some great young players at Leeds United. Lewis Cook is an outstanding talent. What do you make of him? I think he's a good player. I think uh, there's uh, Byron Sam, good player. Charlie Taylor, going to be a good player. Uh, young Mowat, probably... The best footballer we've got, as far as passing and vision and everything. And then there's young Cook, who was... Uh, <laughs> it's a long time since I've seen an 18-year-old get around the football field as much as what he does or as good as what he does. The only thing he is, he's, when he gets the ball, he's still playing at that fast pace. Mm. You know, when he's flying around. When he do, once he learns to, when he gets the ball, just to calm down... And you don't rush his, his passing and that when he when he gets that, this lad's going to be some player. Has modern football gone soft, Norman? Because it's a, it's different to the game you played, isn't it? Well, it, it annoys me immensely when I see big six foot three, six foot two centre defenders get a little knock, and they go down holding their face, and and you know, you know, if you've played the game, this is what referees should do better at you know when people are hurt if anybody hits the ground and rolls they're not injured because I'm telling you if you're injured you hit that ground you do not move you do not move the roll and roll and I'll sit there and I'll say to my good lady watching it they'll get up and nine times out of ten they get up mind you I do think it's hard for referees mm. because to be a referee now, there's no element of sort of uh, mistake, is there? There's no element. You can't make a mistake. It's a lot of scrutiny, isn't there? Whatever you do is there. It's analysed. It's dissected. It's taken to bits. And he's doing it at the heat of the moment. And uh, and then he, g he gets slaughtered afterwards if it's the wrong decision. How would you have gone on on match of the day on a Saturday night if they had all these cameras looking at you? Oh, we'd, have, we'd have been in trouble. But the thing is, you have to learn, don't you? Mm. People say to me about tackling. And that, and our day it was different. But if you played now, you would have to adjust to the rules of the game because uh, you'd be no good to anybody. All you'd be doing is sitting in the stand. 
So it's about adjusting and you know for a fact that you can't do anything stupid because they'd be looking at you, every camera. You know, yeah. you might try and give somebody a dig or something and then they'll, be, they'll zoom in on me. And then you, you, you'd struggle a bit then. You'd be, you'd be suspended. Is there any players you look at and think, well, I would love to, I'd love to have half an hour against him on the pitch. Is anyone you, you'd like to... Not really. There's, a, there's not really. There's players I would not have liked to play the game. I must be honest. Looking at that uh, Henri, mm. he, I thought he was, for a, from a central defender's point of view, he is probably one of the worst players that you'd want to play against. Mm. You know, because he could run big, strong, score goals, do everything. Mm. He's the one player that I would have thought, Oof, I think I would have nightmares if I was playing against him. No, there's not many people that I look at and think oh, I would like to have a go at him or anything like that, you know. The art of defending is going out of the game a little bit. Is there, is there any though that you look at and think, you know, he's, he's a good player, he, he would have done all right with us? Well, the, the, I think the one that stands out, he, he's get just a little bit long in the tooth now, is, is John Terry. Mm. You know, he's, he's a bit of a throwback to our day. And, uh, you know, he's big. Mainly he's not as big as you think, but he's strong. You know, he doesn't see danger. Sticks his head in there where a lot of people wouldn't even dare a going. And but that's one of the reasons that Chelsea at the moment they're all getting just a little bit older and he isn't as he isn't as quite as good as what he was mm. probably last year and things like that. I like the lad it's I like is it Stone? It's John Everton. Stones, yeah. I think he's gonna be good player. Cahill does a good job. There's not that many though that mm. just springs to mind, is it? You know, central defenders and things like that. But uh, the art of defending now, it's difficult. I wouldn't have been able to play the way they play now because I wouldn't have been quick enough just to play with two central defenders and that. It's very, very hard, these two central defenders, you know, with people poo-poo it and say this, that, to other, but there's an awful lot of times you're found one on one, two on two, and you've got to cope with that, and it's it's not easy. Last one from me: Is ever a challenge you made and thought, oh, I, I've probably gone a bit over the top there. I shouldn't have done that. Oh yeah, yeah. There's been one or two. Uh, I think to myself, why? I look back now and I think, why did I do that? And yet, you can't, you can't uh, sort of say I didn't do it, but, but you did in the heat of the moment. You think that I'm gonna. You know, when you do it and then afterwards you think, that was wrong. That was totally not good. Me punching, having a punch at Francis, I regret that to this day. And yet, in nowadays, it, it, it's treated with a bit of humour, really. Mm -hmm. I think it was on the thing last night. There was a <laughs> film and that, and they put all these tackles up together. And people weren't going, oh, that's awful. People were laughing. People were laughing because they don't see it now. Mm. And, but personally, I look back at them and I think, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. You must be very proud then. You've obviously you've got all the medals. You, you've been there and done it with Leeds United. You've got a World Cup winner's medal. And now, finally, in the Football Hall of Fame. You've not had a bad career, Norman, have you? No, no. From somebody that came with uh, not the most ability, but uh, out listening to... Gary Neville talking last night and he puts it better into words than I do and he said that he didn't feel that he should be in the Hall of Fame because talent wise he wasn't as good as the others and, and I think a bit like that but what he said and, and what I know I did we worked our socks off we worked our butts off and we got we got I got as far as I did and probably Gary did uh, on on sheer hard work and playing with good players. But we're in there, so nobody can tear it away from us. They can't. Norman, thank you for your time. Pleasure. Cheers. <laughs>